there was a big decision at the start of the race. The Mercedes went on medium tyres. Now that opened up a world of strategies for them that the Ferraris and the Red Bulls didn't have by starting on the soft. But it did mean that they could have been under a bit of pressure at the start. We can see Max Verstappen worried about the Ferraris, cut straight across the front of Charles Leclerc. Leclerc then looks to the outside, but it's a job well done from Max. You've got Carlos Sainz there in third, tucked right in behind his teammate. And at this point, Lewis Hamilton is scrapping with Sergio Perez here. Perez on the soft tyres has had the, uh, the better start, as would be expected. And Russell behind is going to be under pressure from Lando Norris. And we come through the first corner and suddenly Hamilton is halfway along the inside of Carlos Sainz. And this is a very, very hairy moment between these two come in and uh, Lewis gets all out of shape having just had a, a tiny touch with, uh, with Carlos Sainz. But crucially, they all get through unscathed. We can see on board with, uh, with Hamilton. So he's looking in the mirrors, he's watching Perez, he's watching Russell, he knows on the medium tires that he's gonna be on the back foot. But as they come in here, it's almost like he's watching Perez so much. I don't think he's actually intended to be sticking half a, uh, a car down the inside of Sainz because he's actually just aiming here straight into a gap that is fairly inevitably going to close. And it's a really risky position that, uh, that Hamilton finds himself in, gets to the apex, and you can see the line, everyone else sort of arcing round to get on the gas and get a, a slightly later apex. And Sainz is doing the same, but Hamilton's just stuck half a car down the inside. Very, very risky from him. Little touch there, the, uh, the front left into the side pod area of Sainz. And uh, that provokes a huge oversteer moment from, uh, from Hamilton. But he gets through unscathed and critically manages to, uh, to keep position as well on the medium tyre. So that's paid off nicely at that point for Mercedes. And you can see on board with Perez here, fighting Hamilton, Hamilton looking in the mirrors, and then finally chucks the car down the inside of Sainz. Very risky. And this shot just shows how close it was to, uh, to both these cars being properly in the wars, overlapping wheels, a little touch at that point, but it was so close to just snagging the right rear of, uh, of Carlos and sending the Ferrari properly out of the race. You can see Sainz just opens up the steering of feeling the touch. And I think that is really what saves the, uh, the two of them from having a bigger moment there. Feels the touch, opens up the steering and uh, gives a load more space to Hamilton who needs it at that point. And they avoid a, uh, a major collision. Tiny bit of damage then on Carlos Sainz's Ferrari. Hamilton gets away with it. And the Mercedes then had really good race pace. The one stop was the way to go. Medium onto a hard tire for the Mercedes was a, was a great call. And no one thought the hard tyre would be as good. Even Max Verstappen was saying during the race, let me know how it is, but I expect it'll be rubbish. It wasn't rubbish. And uh, the two Mercedes were brought right back into play. And actually, without a virtual safety car or a full safety car, it could have been a really close race. This is our simulation of what might have happened. And you can see this is where Verstappen would have had to take a second pit stop, emerges behind the two Mercedes. And then by the end of the race, he's going to be hunting them down. And we would have had a really thrilling race, I think, between Max Verstappen on uh, probably a, a new medium tyre, trying to hunt down, could even be a, been a hard for Verstappen at that point, trying to hunt down the Mercedes going long on their hard one stopper. The Red Bull had really good straight line speed. It's likely he still would have won the Grand Prix, but maybe Mercedes could have been trying to play some tactics or something to hang on. Probably Verstappen wins it, would have been a thriller. By the side of the track, Yuki Tsunoda stops. Tires are fidget, tires are fidget. But it didn't happen because we did have, first of all, a VSC, then a full safety car. Yuki Tsunoda, a, a, it was a strange stoppage that he had, stopping the first time, then managing to, to get the car back. Thought there was a loose wheel, it wasn't. Tires are okay, start again, tires are okay. This is really weird, so what are they checking now? Something around Yuki's belt? Came back, AlphaTauri didn't see anything wrong with it, sent him out again, then they realized there was an issue, and it looked to be a, a differential issue. Uh, so Yuki was feeling the, the rear wheels spin up at, at different rates and basically the car crabbing and it's what it feels like when you have a, a, a loose wheel. It wasn't the case, it was another issue. Alfa Tari then told him to stop the car. But he's gonna park up by the side of the track here and it doesn't look like he's parked up right by uh, an escape hatch. Yellow flags being waved. There's no chance that is to do with helping Max Verstappen and Red Bull out. There's no way that the teams are coordinated like that. Alfa Tari running their own race and Yuki was having a, a decent drive this weekend. It was just chance that it actually helped out Max Verstappen. Uh, didn't help Mercedes and it really hindered Charles Leclerc who pitted the lap before the virtual safety car and it kind of ruled him right out of the mix. With the virtual safety car, it allowed Verstappen to have a free pit stop and emerge in the front. So it really did kind of derail the Mercedes strategy of the one stop. Then the full safety car came and we had a difference in strategies. Mercedes then had one, two in, uh, in the field. Verstappen took an, another stop 
and uh, went for the soft tyre and tried to pass the two Mercedes. Now from that position, Mercedes with a 1-2, but on the medium tyre, compared to Verstappen sitting there now in third on the soft. It was, it was a risky play, but I can understand why Mercedes wanted to keep the track position. Zandvoort wasn't the easiest circuit to overtake on, and they're winning a race with not that many left in the season. They've got themselves into a good position, and they had great race pace. So I can understand the position, but where it went wrong slightly for Mercedes was they split the strategies. George Russell pushed for the stop to go for the soft tyres, and uh, that put Verstappen in second, took away Hamilton's buffer, and I think regardless, Lewis wasn't going to be able to hold on to Max. You could see the, the grip on the restart that Verstappen had over Hamilton, and he in fact fell off the podium. Even with the buffer there, it wasn't going to work, but taking Russell out of the equation just made it a slam dunk for, uh, for Verstappen over Hamilton, and uh, Lewis wasn't very happy about that. For George Russell, good call from the, from the, the car. An easier call, though, from Russell than, than Hamilton. Hamilton's in the lead of the race at that point. Russell's got nothing to lose. He's second. He's not going to win if he stays on his mediums because he's got his teammate ahead. He's got Max Verstappen behind on the soft. If he takes the soft, he'll only lose to Max Verstappen, who he'd lose to inevitably anyway, and he might be able to jump his teammate. So it was a good call from Russell. It was the right call, but it was actually an easier call for George to make than Lewis, who had the carrot of the, the victory. He also had his teammate there, and he didn't know that George was pitting. So the split strategies cost Lewis Hamilton and, uh, and allowed George Russell into second. Now, if Hamilton had a pitted as well as, uh, as Russell, then this is what would have happened. You'd have had, by the end of the race, the two Mercedes finishing second and third, a better outcome than what they achieved, but they would have just slotted in behind Max Verstappen, probably unable to pass him soft tire to soft tire on the Red Bull ahead with that good straight line speed. So at this point, it's looking quite tricky for Mercedes to win, regardless of the outcome. One thing that might have been their magic bullet would be to stack the cars. And Verstappen here, we can ride on board with Max, as George Russell is about to, uh, to come into the pits. Now you can see Russell ahead, Nicholas Latifi is the car ahead of George Russell, and then you've got Lewis Hamilton all the way up there leading the race at this point. Now what they could do, potentially Mercedes, because everyone was coming through the pits, if they decided to pit Hamilton and Russell, then possibly George could have just backed up, backed into Max Verstappen, been sitting his car there, given a little bit more space to both Hamilton and Latifi, which is what you do in a double stack anyway, because you don't want to be sitting there stationary as, uh, as everyone else is able to, to come through the pits and overtake you. So you'd want to back everyone up and try and get the space. And if they'd have done that, there's a chance that Russell might have been able to back Verstappen up to the point that Hamilton could then emerge and uh, rejoin ahead of Max and in the lead of the race, in which case Hamilton's your favorite for the race win, finally for Mercedes. But Verstappen gets the call here to, uh, to close up. They now know that Russell's pitting. They're listening to, uh, to Russell's radio. So he gets right on the, uh, on the tail of George, knows it's coming, and Hamilton doesn't pit. A couple of seconds for Hamilton to pit if George could have backed up. Could have been on, and that could have been the one magic bullet for Mercedes. Aside from that, there were a few things that, that didn't go their way. Basically, they were starting from too far back fourth and sixth. And with the backing up, you're always running the risk of driving unnecessarily slowly under the safety car, which can see you in front of the stewards. They might have got away with it in that occasion because of the, the Latifi car in between. But basically from fourth and sixth on the grid, it was going to be pretty tough for Mercedes anyway. Now at the end of their qualifying run, there was a yellow flag for, uh, for Sergio Perez and, and Hamilton and Mercedes were, were Toto Wolff said that they were playing for pole. They were in the mix. And this is the telemetry of Hamilton's lap at the end of Q3 against Max Verstappen's. And the first thing that's very striking is the top speed that you can see, the, uh, the blue color of Max, the red color of Lewis. And all the time on these flat out sections, you can just see the Red Bull is just quicker and by not a small amount as well in some of the longer flat out sections there into turn one and into turn six. So that's where Red Bull had a big advantage. But as we can see, Hamilton is gonna back off his lap coming into, the, uh, into this corner here. This is where Sergio Perez has stopped about that point coming out of the, uh, the final corner having a spin. And at this point here, Lewis is actually slightly, very slightly up on, uh, on Max by a few hundredths coming into turn 13. And that's where he has to back off. So actually it looks like maybe he is playing for pole, maybe he is in the mix and backing off cost him a chance of a, of a very good grid spot. The reality is probably it wasn't gonna be the case anyway for Hamilton. And we can see data here, which is pretty typical of what happened in, uh, in the rest of the laps that Hamilton had. This is the first run against Max's first run. And again, you can see coming into this final corner here, 
again, Hamilton is, uh, is slightly quicker than Verstappen at this point. The red line underneath the, uh, the blue line, that means he's quicker than Max. But by the end of the lap, because of the Red Bull speed, exiting the corner on the straight, it just goes right up for, uh, for Verstappen and he ends up quicker than, uh, than Lewis on this lap by a tenth and a half. So he's getting two tenths through the final corner. That was fairly typical. And if that was the case on the Perez lap as well, probably Hamilton would be very, very close. Be maybe even right there with Carlos Sainz, but likely he'd still be fourth. So probably Mercedes are still missing just a little bit of qualifying pace. And if they had that started right towards the front or Hamilton had jumped Sainz at that start, was critical, it cost him 10 seconds. Uh, being stuck behind Carlos Sainz, he wasn't very quick. One of them went his way. Maybe they had the pace for the win on this occasion. So we're going to get racing again. Hamilton ahead of Verstappen. And away we go then. We're going green and Verstappen has got a decent toe behind Hamilton. And Verstappen is going wheel to wheel down the main straight with Hamilton. And Verstappen is ahead going into turn one. Lewis Hamilton's been overtaken by Max Verstappen right at the start. So that was a look at Mercedes push for another win. But they came up short. Seven races to go for them. Loads more action in the Grand Prix as well. Carlos Sainz had a miserable time and uh, we'll have a look at that as well as Alpine having a fantastic time clawing through for some points. Check it out on F1 TV.